How do you measure groups? Well, how I measure groups is typically I use extreme spread and then I convert that linear measurement into MOA. That allows me to compare groups shot at various ranges, 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, etc. Another method that I really like to measure my groups is known as mean radius or sometimes I also like to see or use median radius. Now the reason why I don't use those very much is because it's really a time-consuming and tedious process to make all these measurements and calculations. And the tediousness uh, and time uh, consumption only increases as your groups get larger. Five shot, ten shot groups, etc. Now all that kind of changed relatively recently as various different companies have made available group calculator apps. And I started using, not too long ago, a matter of months ago, I started using the Hornady Fordoff group calculator app on my smartphone. So that seemed like just a fantastic approach to taking out, taking away all of the tediousness and still allowing me to make my calculations of mean radius. And now after using this app for a number of months on quite a number of different groups that I've calculated, I think I've got it figured out pretty well and would like to share some of my insights and ideas about it with you. Now what we have here is a five shot group. Yes, this is a five shot group. There are two bullets that pass through this hole. I shot this from 100 yards with my 300 PRC from the prone position just the other day using this Hornady Match Factory Ammo 225 grain ELD bullets. Now what I want to do is I want to calculate extreme spread and mean radius. We're going to begin by making this measurement manually. So I like to use these kind of custom-made post-it notes. Works very well for me. I like to begin by just putting a little note in here. 225 grain ELD match. Now we're going to make our edge-to-edge -edge extreme spread measurement. And I like to literally make it from the most extreme edge to the most extreme edge. I think we'd all agree that this constitutes, these two rounds constitute the extreme spread of this group. So I'm going to use my digital caliper here, zero it out. So now let's make this measurement. Here we go, 1.635. Let's go ahead and record that, 1.635 inches. The caliber of this 300 PRC is 308. And now we need to actually calculate the true extreme spread. That is 1.327 of an inch. Now as I noted this was shot from 100 yards and 100 yards the MOA equivalent is 1.047. So all we need to do here in this case is divide it by 1.047. And this is now our MOA. 1.27. Notice I'm going to round this to two digits, 1.27. Pretty easy. But now if I were to measure the mean radius, I would have to make numerous measurements and then some calculations obviously to get the mean or the average of those measurements. 
Now this particular target here is actually very well suited to use in the app because each of these squares represents one inch and these smaller squares are half an inch. Let's just confirm this. And to do that, we'll measure from the bullseye out across to this square. One point zero inch right on the money. Let's go ahead and make another measurement in this direction. There we go. Maybe a little bit of an error on my part here, on just on my measuring technique, but we are right on the money. Or awful, awful, awful close. Now the reason why I mentioned this is because when we work with the app, we have to essentially teach the app what one inch is, or if you prefer, you could do half inch measurements or two inch, whatever, but the defaults to a one inch measurement. Once we teach it what that one inch distance looks like on the target, then it can accurately measure the distance between shots or from one shot to another. Now, if I want to measure this group with the app, I need to convert this paper target into a digital target. Now, I could take a photo of it. That works okay. But what I've learned is that it's really, really important to get that what we call registration correct right up front. And that registration is actually allowing the app to accurately measure one inch here or one inch there. You only have one calibration, and that is, let's say, one inch from here to here. So if I'm taking a photo of this thing, I have to make sure that my camera is absolutely perpendicular to this target. And I also had better make sure that my target is nice and flat, nice and flat and level. That is actually easier said than done. Now, being as careful as you can will work out okay, but if you want to be precise about it, that method will introduce a bit of error as it almost, it, it's almost impossible to make sure that our camera and target are perfectly squared up. What I prefer doing is cutting up my target. I'm gonna take a scissors to this thing, and the only reason why I'm cutting it up is so that this piece of paper will fit on my flatbed scanner. Once this is done, I'm gonna upload the digital target to my smartphone and then use it in the Hornady Ford Off group calculator app. I'm gonna launch the Hornady Ford Off app and this is the tool we're interested in, the group analysis. I'm gonna create a brand new group. The first step is where we need to, it says, take a photo of the target. Now we can also use an existing photo on our machine, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're going to pick a photo. This is the photo that I want to use, and if we need to, we can rotate this one way or the other. We do not need any rotation on this, so we're gonna leave it just like it is. And then I'm going to click OK with this little checkbox. Now the next step is where we can crop the photo. Well, what we want to do here is we want to include as much important information as necessary. So I'm going to include the whole group plus my measurements. That looks good. We'll then click crop. A lot of these uh, selections are in that upper right corner. And now we're ready to actually set up the measurements. And now it tells us that if we have a question, want a little bit of help on something, just click on the question mark um, icon, which is at the top right up here. We can click it and it tells us all this different stuff right here. I encourage you the first time through to make sure you read that. It is helpful. Now we're going to fill this in from top to bottom. 
I'm not going to make a new measurement of an existing favorite measurement, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that. But the next one we do need to deal with, and at least to confirm the bullet diameter. Now, I've been making some measurements. Most recent measurements have been made with a 30 caliber rifle, 308, so nothing needs to be changed there. If we needed to change it, just click the little edit pencil and choose some of these common calibers or type in your own using the other selection. We're in good shape as it is. I'm going to select the 30 cal and that just returns us back to this main screen. Now the distance to the target, pay attention to that. We're going to again do 100 yards just like I have been doing so I'm going to leave that alone. Very similar thing, we can edit it and type in 100 yards at, or whatever you really were shooting at. I'm going to go back and just accept that. Now I need to make my registration points. Notice there's going to be a blue registration point and a bluish green, maybe a greenish registration point. So I'm going to click on the pencil here. I am going to have my registration points or measurement points be exactly as much as I can or as carefully as I can one inches. So now I'm going to lay down one of these control points. Let's do the blue one and we really need to zoom in, really, really need to zoom in. So I'm going to choose um, this point right here. Now I'm, I'm moving a little bit away from the, the shots simply because some of those shots were actually um, obscuring the actual lines, those one inch grids. And, and don't be afraid to really zoom this thing in because we want to get that right on. And notice when I remove my finger, it wants to jump a little bit sometimes. So you got to kind of bear with it. I did it again. Okay, I'm going to add that one. Click add or touch on add. And now notice that that control point changed to a greenish color. Well, it's waiting for me to do that one. So now I'm going to zoom this in again, get once again to this next one inch mark. And notice that this one is the one obscured. So I want to avoid that. So I'm going to go horizontally, really zoom in on this. We can see it, even though there is a little bit of a green background. I'm going to zoom in on this as well as I can, move that digital target, and we're going to add that one. Okay, now we have both of our control points. You can see them right there. And the next step is to tell the app my point of aim. I'm going to click on the red button right over here. And my point of aim, again, zoom up on this, my point of aim was the dead bullseye in this centermost target. That looks good. Click Add there. Again, a very stepwise order here. And now the last step is the actual bullet impacts. So I'm going to zoom in. And the order of the shot really doesn't matter. You don't have to... Um, click these in the order of the shot. I'm going to click add. I got that one. And it just says that's your shot one. It may not have really been shot one. That really doesn't matter in the, any of these calculations. Add that one, shot two. Let's go ahead and add this one, shot three, because we're really going to zoom in on those last two that almost flew through the same hole. We can see one that one about there. And the last one was just a little bit off to that side. This is really touchy here. There we go. And now I'm going to click done. And what I want to do now is I want to scroll down on this page. And sometimes you'll accidentally click on add and then you'll notice that, oh, gee, it, it isn't really in the right place. So what you need to do is scroll down on this page, find 
the one that's wrong and just hit the little trash can. Just hit that little trash can and it deletes it. Then go back into the impacts, adding more impacts or bullet impacts, and that's it. Now, notice that our results are shown to us. This says that my group was 1.32 MOA. But in reality, uh, we just measured the group at 1.27. Let's look at the extreme spread. The extreme spread that we measured was 1.327. That would be the center hole to the center hole. It's measuring it in the same way, but that's where it's off, 1.39. And I've always noticed um, when I'm doing this that it's off just by a little bit. So just bear that in mind as you're working with this, that your measurement that you're making on paper with good digital calipers and your eye could be maybe, you know, two inches away from that piece of paper. This is as exact as you're going to get it. I trust this measurement more so than the app measurement because there are lots of potential errors with this digital methodology. I'm not going to get into everything, but the camera can have some distortion, etc., etc., etc. So uh, let's go ahead, bearing all that in mind, let's take a look at this mean radius. Mean radius of this one is 0 0.42 inches. That's not too bad at all. Now, to save this, I'm going to click on this little check mark again in the upper right, And that is that.